Today it's Beat Detective, part two. Welcome back everyone to the Drum Sample Shop YouTube channel. Um, if you're new here, you're very welcome. Today we've got Beat Detective Part 2, where we're going to be diving a little deeper into some more advanced and professional techniques to get the absolute maximum out of Beat Detective. Um, now, if you haven't already watched our first video, Beat Detective Part 1, I would go ahead and watch that now. We'll link it in the description. Um, that's going to be really important to get the basics and the fundamentals of Beat Detective before we move on to the stuff we're going to be talking about today. But for those of you that have already seen that video, let's get straight into it. Okay, here we go again. Now, because we've already done part one of Beat Detective, I'm not going to be covering loads of the topics that we've already visited in part one. I will be mentioning them in passing for the context of this video. Um, but like we say, if you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that and then come back here. So today we're going to be looking at five main things. We're going to be looking at playlists. We're going to be looking at working in sections. We're going to be looking at groups. We're going to be looking at some other Beat Detective settings to keep in mind. And then we're going to be looking at listening to the drums afterwards. Okay, but first let's have a little listen to our drum recordings. They're different from last time. It's not the same parts, but it is still Nathan. Um, so let's have a little listen. Okay, great. So we've got a 6-8 groove and we've got, we're moving between, he's moving between using the hi-hats and using the ride cymbal. And then there's also, it's interspersed with some snare and tom fills sort of rolling around the kit in like a triplet fill. So that's where we're at. Okay, so our first point is going to be playlists. Now, it's important to create a few different playlists of the audio for a few reasons. Firstly, so you can always revisit the audio, the original audio, whenever you need. Once you've made your edits and Beat Detective has done its thing, um, there might be a few inconsistencies. Beat Detective might have got it a little bit wrong in certain sections. Um, and then what you want to do is you want to be able to revisit how it should have sounded, albeit not perfect. Um, but at least then you can revisit the parts and know where those hits should land. Okay, now we've got a couple of playlists set up. We will be making another one later, but now we've got a couple set up. We've got one that we're going to work on. Um, now we're going to be mo moving on to our second point, which is working in sections. Um, even though last video, um, in part one, we looked at using Beat Detective across the entire um, the entire span of, of the drum recordings from start to finish, the, enti the entire, effectively, you know, the entire song or um, the entire clip, um, that is not necessarily the best way to do it. If it's something very short, you, you, you might be all right. Obviously, we only had 12 bars last time, so it, it wasn't too bad. But if you're looking at a whole song, you're looking at sort of two and a half, three, four, five, six, you know, or more minutes. Um, the best approach, I think, is to work in sections because it'll end up being easier in the long run to go and make small changes to a, a section of your song as you're going along and, and do it section by section than it is to do the entire song and then, in retrospect, go and trawl through and find all the slight inconsistencies where Beat Detective's not quite hit the mark. Okay, and that's exactly what we're going to do now. We're going to work in sections. So um, how long your sections are is up to you. It kind of depends on your song. You might want to work in 8-bar sections, um, 12, 16, 24, 32, and whatever makes sense. It, it might depend on the parts that your drummer's playing and maybe the complexity of the parts. Um, 
but we're going to work in, we've only got 24 bars here, so we'll do it in two, two sections. We'll do it in 12 bar sections. Now I'm going to start by uh, unselecting my full kick group on the bottom left and selecting my kick and snare group. Um, now I'm going to start my selection one bar prior to the first downbeat on the kick drum. Uh, because what we want to make sure is we want to make sure that Beat Detective has all the audio that it needs. If I started the selection from that first downbeat right on that bar line, you can see actually Nathan's kick is close, but it's a little early. Okay, so that means that if I start the selection from there, if I start the selection from there, you can see that it's actually chopping off the audio there. It's not going to read it. Beat Detective just won't know it's there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start a bar early. So that's our selection up until this fill uh, around here. Now, as always, we're going to go up to event, we're going to go to Beat Detective. Now, as before, we're start starting at clip separation. Um, we're going to hit Capture Selection, and we're going to hit Analyze. Um, currently, our sensitivity is at zero. Um, now, important things to note here are um, I've got 16th note, note values selected, because um, that's right for this song. Um, all these parts, but also I've got the little three ticked. Now this little three is triplets, and all of the fills that Nathan performs all the way through these recordings are triplet fills. So we want to make sure that Beat Detective knows the information that it's receiving. It's still just a computer, which is why we need to make sure all these settings are in place to make sure it's not going to do it automatically. We've got time signature here is 6-8, which is correct. And then we've also got our start and end bars matching the Pro Tools session. You want to make sure that they match. Um, if they don't, you don't want to know what's going to happen. It's going to go everywhere. So we've hit Capture Selection, we've hit Analyze, and now we're going to bring up our sensitivity. We're going to zoom in. We're just going to check that it's catching everything we want it to catch. Now the selection of sub-beats or beats will again, depend on your song um, and your drummer's parts. Um, I tend to sort of lean towards sub-beats because drummers play at various velocities um, and these markers will only pick up, you know, at the sensitivity that you're asking it to pick up, it'll only pick up the majority. It might not pick up, pick up all of them. Um, so I think sub-beats ends up basically catching a few of the other lower velocity hits that might you, you, you might want, but... It, beat Detective might not pick up if you just selected beats. So I, I sort of err on the side of sub beats. That's where I stand with it anyway. Now, at the bottom of this detection section is trigger pad. Now, we didn't talk about trigger pad last time, despite how vital it is, mainly because I believe that this being advanced techniques of Beat Detective, um, this is an advanced technique, because most people miss it out. Um, I used Beat Detective for years before I started using it with the trigger pad um, as something I was taking note of um, and taking into consideration. Okay, so the trigger pad, what is it? The trigger pad effectively is the amount of time prior to the transient hit, let's say it's a kick drum, prior to the front end of that that audio transient, how much time before that Beat Detective will make its chop, will make it slice through the audio. Now, why is that important? It's important because even though the marker the Beat Detective will place in your audio will be on the transient, so for example with the kick drum, the marker will be on the front end of the kick drum, so therefore the front end of the kick drum will be put on the grid as we're asking it to. However, the audio won't be sliced there. It won't be chopped there. It will be chopped at the moment, as I've put, it will be chopped 12 milliseconds prior to that. Then that means that things like hi-hats and other things, especially in this section, the hi-hat, the hi-hat might actually be a little bit ahead of the kick drum. And because it's a little bit ahead of the kick drum, what we don't want is we don't want Beat Detective to slice all the way through that and miss the front end of the hi-hat transient, if you see what I mean. So because the trigger pad is 12 milliseconds before the marker it's put on the kick drum, 
anything that's a little bit waving on that mark, it will still catch the front end of the audio, whether it be a hi-hat or a or another symbol or a tom or anything like that. I hope that makes sense, but we're going to look into it a little bit more and we'll 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 view it firsthand when we end up chopping up the audio. Anyway, so we've we've made our markers. Now we're going to go down and we are going to select our full kit group. And now we've selected our full kit group, we can click any of these other channels holding down shift and then it will select all of our channels. Um, remembering that our markers are still only anchored from the kick and the snare at the moment. So it's going to chop everything vertically, everything stays in time, everything stays in phase, um, but our markers are just from the kick and snare. So then we're going to hit separate and then we're going to go down to clip conform. And I like to keep my strength of the conform up to 100%. Um, if you if you might want to not have 100%, you might want to use a little bit lower than that. You might want to use 80%, 90%. Um, but in my head, if I'm using Beat Detective, it's because I want to quantize the drums and have them as tight as they can possibly be, um, especially kick and snare being my main two, um, then 100% is, is what I use. 80% what it will do is it will, from whatever direction it's coming, whether it's slightly early or whether it's slightly late on the click, then it will move it 80% of the way there or 90% of the way there. So if it's a little bit late, it will move it 80% of the way back. If it's a little bit early, it will move it 80% of the way forward. We're going to leave this at 100%. We're going to go conform. And now, if you see, as we were talking about the trigger pad, now that we've conformed, let's zoom in here on, uh, let's say, this kick drum. So we've got this kick drum here and this snare drum that happen in short succession. So as you can see, this little white line with the green arrows is the marker right at the front end of the audio for this kick drum. However, this section here is our trigger pad. So it means that even though it's been anchored from the front of it, front end of that transient, that's not where the chop happened, the chop happened here. So as you can see from the downbeat of this section from the very beginning, we've got a hi-hat here. I can't really see the audio very well. If I turn it up a little bit there, you can see the audio. That's the hi-hat. And here's the front end of the kick drum. Now, luckily for us, Nathan's hi-hat is a touch late. So there's no problem with the hi-hat being cut in half. However, you can, you can see that if, if that hi-hat track here, if I sort of slip it this way, if, hi, if Nathan's hi-hat was actually about there in his playing, then if the chop was right on the bar line, even though the kick and the snare drum would be marked there and put on the grid there from the front of their transient, then the hi-hat isn't being... There's no anchor from the hi-hat. So it means that it would just chop it straight through whatever was effectively in time with that kick drum in the initial recording. And therefore, we'd be missing some of the beginning. It would chop it there, okay? So then we'd miss the beginning of that hi-hat audio, of the transient. So as you can see now, we've got that little buffer there. Luckily for us, it's not a problem. But every drummer plays differently. And some drummers are going to be a little bit ahead, a little bit behind, depending on their pocket. Okay, once we've conformed, then we're ready to go down to edit smoothing. Um, now, another technique that I tend to use um, is to not use fill and crossfade straight away, is to use fill gaps to start with as we're working section by section. You'll soon find out that Beat Detective does not like filling and crossfading if there's already any fades or crossfades in your audio. There might be a crossfade somewhere and it, Beat Detective isn't going to like that. So it's a nice way to sort of avoid that hassle. So we're going to go fill gaps. And when you listen back, you will hear the odd pop and click um, because there's no crossfades. But if you can sort of cast your mind away from that, then, um, then we're all good. Let's have a little listen.
great. Feels good. Feels strong. Now, filling the gaps without the crossfades is just a little bit irritating and you don't like listening back, then you can always fill and crossfade or you can fill gaps and then fill and crossfade and then have a little listen back so that when you're listening, you've got the crossfades and it's nice and smooth. And then you can command Z, get rid of your crossfades and move on to the next section or make a little edit if Beat Detective's not quite got it right. But for now, we're going to move on to the second half of our drum recording. Um, for you, it might be moving from your intro to your verse or your verse to your pre-chorus, pre-chorus to the chorus. Um, it's another way of doing section by section is not doing it just by bars, but actually doing it by section of your song because effectively the likelihood is, is that the parts that are being played are going to change and differ depending on what section of your song you're working on. Anyway, we're going to move down to the bottom left and uncheck our full kick group um, and we're going to uncheck our kick and snare group. So... Another way to get the best out of Beat Detective is to actually treat every section uniquely. So let's say you've got a verse where in the verse you've only got kick, snare, hi-hat, that's it. Then maybe just use your kick and snare group to anchor your Beat Detective markers on and that's where everything's going to be quantized from. But then you might have, let's say, a pre-chorus or a bridge or, or any other section that actually has got quite a lot of tom fills or, or it's actually the whole basis of that part is is built on the toms rather than a hi-hat or, or a ride what you can do then is you can use a group like a kick snare and the toms in a group and anchor everything from them so your markers are not only going to be coming from the kick and snare they'll also be marking where all of the toms are so that means that you're making the toms really tight on the grid as well as the kick and the snare but then all of your cymbal hits and other bits and bobs will stay feeling natural. So that's what we're going to do with this second half, is we're going to use the kick, snare, tom, tom group um, to make sure there that, you know, as an example, all of our fills that Nathan's doing are going to be really tight on the grid. So as I check that selection, we've got kick, snare top, rack tom, floor tom. Now, one thing to make sure is that you're always selecting things in whole beats. It's another thing to add about selections, is that, um, over here, you see the selection ends halfway through those sub beats there, and it's it's not right on that end beat. So what you could do is you could change your selection, but for now, today, um, I'm actually going to just chop that to there. So we're ending on a whole beat. Now, as you notice, I've selected this second half of the audio with the kick, snare, and the two toms. Um, the audio still has... A trigger pad here but the chop has happened 12 milliseconds prior to that so that means we're not starting on a bar so what we're going to have to do now is we're going to just change our selection so that our selection actually in the top bar here with these little uh, blue arrows we're going to make sure that our selection is actually happening from the beginning of the bar so that we're working in whole beats rather than little sub beats beat detective isn't going to like that it likes full bars full beats so we're going to go back up to clip separation. We are, all the settings are the same. It's still the same song, the same parts. So I'm going to hit capture selection. I'm going to hit analyze. We used 29% last time. And I believe we used 29% last video, which is hilarious. That says something about Nathan's playing, I think. You can decide. So we've hit capture selection and we've hit analyze. And we've got our white markers for this second half. Now we can just zoom in and just double check that it's getting everything we want it to get. Looks like to me it is. You can see all that, all those tom rolls down there, nicely captured. So they're nice and tight, that's exactly what we want. Now we're going to go down and hit our full kick group again, and we're going to hold shift and click the rest of the audio in. And then we're going to hit separate, and then we're going to go down to clip conform. And then we're going to hit conform. And then we're going to go down to edit smoothing. And we're going to go fill gaps. We're going to fill the gaps. And we're going to listen back to that. Great. So it sounds great. So what we're going to do is we are going to select all of our audio and then we're going to go on to our fill and crossfade and we're going to hit smooth 
Now, all of it's filled and cross-faded. Well, cross-faded, because it was already filled. Um, cross-faded all together as one section, and then we don't have to worry about Beat Detective getting a bit funny about having cross-fades in the audio it's reading. One thing to finally mention is to always listen back to everything you've done. Listen back intently and listen back to make sure that it's exactly how you want it to sound. You're the producer, you're the mix engineer, the editor. You, you Make sure that what you're doing is giving you the result that you want. If it isn't, Beat Detective isn't perfect. You might want to go in having listened back and make your own slight edits. You might want to go in and move things around a little bit. There might be the odd hi-hat or the odd tom or something or the odd cymbal hit where it doesn't quite feel like it's managed to capture it the way that you feel it should have done. Um, so one way to do that is let's say there's a hi-hat somewhere in here that I don't feel is quite the way I wanted it to. I wanted that human element, I wanted the human feel, but it's not quite landed where I, where I thought it might. So this hi-hat here, just there, that one there, is a, is a little late. I, I, could, I could deal with it being a little bit tighter. So if we want that to be a little bit more in time, then we can actually go in and do our own beat detectiving. We can we can be the computer for a minute. So if we go in, if I make a slice all the way through, Command E, slice all the way through this audio, every single channel. Now if I click this and I hold Command, then I'm going to be in slip mode effectively. You can go up to the top left and you can hit slip. Um, I like to stay in grid and then hit Command, which is kind of disables grid and takes you into slip mode for a moment. So, and then we can move all of that. So that hi-hat is a little bit more on that beat. We drop it. Okay, that fade that was there before on this end will still be there. And we can add our own fade. You can keep Command um, held down for the fade so you can get whatever fade depth you want. We put that there. We've got that hi-hat right on the grid there. And then that should feel a little bit better. Yeah, great. That was it there. Feels great. So you might want to go in and make your own edits if Beat Detective has got the odd thing here and there that hasn't quite hit the mark. Okay, now we're going to be talking about playlists again, just to make sure that we're creating a third and final playlist for your audio when it's consolidated. So we've got one which is unedited, one which is edited, which is the one we're on at the moment, and then the third one which is consolidated, where we consolidate all of those chops and fades into one smooth audio file for each track to make sure that then it looks nice for one, it's neat, and then also it's much easier to manage as a whole song of drums that's been edited rather than looking at this you know library of of white slices all the way through the audio we want that to look a bit prettier so we are gonna come out of Big Detective we're gonna make sure that our full drum kit group is highlighted and then we're gonna go up to one of these little arrows here and we're gonna hit duplicate again and then we've created another duplicate so now we've got this top one is unedited We've got this middle one, which is edited. And now we can go down to the third one and we can highlight all of the audio and we can do this short, it's a great shortcut, one of my favorites. Shift, option, three. And it's going to consolidate all of that audio. And now all of that audio looks much more normal, but also it's just, it's just nice to look at. It looks neater. We like to clean up after ourselves. As always, I like to listen back with the triggers enabled. Let's have a little... That will listen to a few sections. Boom. Well, there you have it. I really hope you got loads out of that video. Um, Beat Detective truly is a fantastic feature inside Pro Tools. Now, if you're a drummer who records and edits stuff from home yourself um, and does remote sessions, then 
Pro Tools is a no-brainer. Beach Detective will be your best friend. Um, it really is that simple. So um, that's our suggestion here at Drum Sample Shop. If you're a drummer who does remote sessions, Pro Tools is the one for you. Now, as always, we'd love it if you could like and subscribe to this channel um, and hit the bell icon for those notifications so you never miss any video that we put out. You catch us every time. But thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next one.